I'm going to cover spatials and renders. One of the most confusing parts of Game Builder Studio, probably initially, is understanding the relationship between renders and, and spatials and the two different uh, types of spatials that exist in Game Builder Studio. I think once you get past this, or an understanding rather, of these two components of Game Builder Studio, I think you'll have a better grasp on how to move things around, how to add objects, and and uh, which spatials to use. The Game Builder Studio engine is a component based engine so everything uh, is broken down into separate components uh, and they uh, each component has their uh, has its own responsibility so the position and velocity and rotation and things like that is separated out into a spatial and there are renders that display images or colors to the screen that are controlled by a spatial so if you notice, if you go to the properties panel of a of a spatial component, you'll see if you scroll down to the uh, to the spatial properties, you'll see there's a section called controlled render with a drop down for you to select which render this spatial controls, and there's uh, information about the position, size, rotation, and velocity. Now, uh, to, there are two different types of spatials. Initially, when you create an object from this quick panel here on the side the spatial that is used is a collision spatial so right away your 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 object um, will have physics capabilities to for you to add uh, collision shapes for you to add uh, properties of whether it's bouncy etc and uh, this spatial will be simulated in the physics engine uh, in the underlying uh, game engine so if you don't want um, your object to be simulated in the physics world all you would do is you would add a basic component, a basic spatial, and you can find that here. Add that to the to the entity, and what you'll notice is it uh, the spatials are unlocked because it's mandatory for you to have at least one spatial on each on uh, on every entity. So now that it's unlocked, because I have two spatials, I have a choice. I can use the basic spatial that I just added and just remove the the original spatial, which was a collision spatial. So this basic spatial now is the default spatial. And what you'll notice if you try to drag the render, nothing happens because the basic spatial does not have a render assigned to it. So you have to assign a render, and then you'll be able to move around the object that's on screen. And uh, if you go to the render component, you'll be able to see that this render is controlled by a by the basic spatial. So though the, these these two components are fairly tied together because the renderer grabs all of its information from the spatial when it whether it's being simulated by physics or if it's just a basic spatial it gets all of its position size and rotation information from uh, the spatial component. Um, mainly in your games you're gonna only ever have one spatial and one render, but say for example you wanted to have another render that was maybe a, a health bar or something on the same entity you could um, add another render so let's do that or rather or shape and let's give it a uh, just a random color of a green make it a square instead of a circle and then I'm going to tell it I want I want this render to be controlled by the same spatial as the original render and I'm going to give this a size any secondary render will not have its size property controlled by the original spatial so you'll notice it won't show up until I give it a size and I can offset this render from the position of of the uh, basic spatial so I can use the position offset or I can use a registration point you'll notice as you drag objects around there's a little circle there's a little black circle with a crosshair in the middle of the object and that's the registration point or the anchor point of the of rotation and the center of the object um, so for this render which is a secondary render on this entity I can just offset it um, say a hundred pixels um, to the left and maybe 200 pixels above or maybe just one and there you go as I control this object both renders 
are controlled by this spatial so it's grabbing its its position information from this one spatial and that's how you could have one spatial controlling multiple renders um, uh, on one entity and you of course you can have multiple spatials on on the uh, same entity as well you just add another spatial and and wire up uh, which renderer is controlled um, by that spatial so it's it's fairly simple when you when you when you uh, uh, get used to it I mean it's, it's pretty much remembering that spatials control position velocity rotation and it controls the size of the original render and renders handle displaying um, images and colors to the screen and they're they are normally controlled by a spatial and if you don't have a renderer that is controlled by a spatial you can manually change the position of the renderer um, in the properties panel um, but it's recommended to use a spatial